I might your summer bedding's coming on really well. It's looking uh, lovely still. Weather's uh, kept uh, uh, nice, so the flowers are still producing colour. Very, very summery looking uh, and giving you bright colour when everything, the weather at the moment, is starting to go a little bit dull. So yeah. it's a nice, uh, a nice, very uh, colourful, very yeah. colourful. And time also, well, last time we was here, the garden, you know, it's, it's pan filling yeah, out a bit now. The, isn't it? Uh, the garden's filling up really, really nicely. All the plants, even though they were planted only a couple of months ago, uh, they're starting to fill out. Look as though they've been here a while now. And it was uh, the weather's been kind, um, very, very. Um, um, uh, on our side and very warm so everything's mm. been growing particularly well the, um, everything's looking good filling out it looks like it's been here a while a few things that we've got to prune back and uh, the, the, now the flowers are finished and do a little bit of maintenance on but still things are late summer flowering the perennials are now looking particularly good and, and looking uh, colourful so um, it does look like a professional garden doesn't it yeah yeah it's, it's starting to fill out now looking uh, really nicely and uh, and still looking colourful at this time of year so uh, yeah yeah we're here at Swarks the Nursery again for September's edition of Green Finger Tips with Mark Smith, as usual, our expert at gardener. So what we've got today then, Mark? Uh, well, um, as, as a gardener, you've got to be prepared. You've got to be have a plan. You've got to uh, look uh, not only in the present but in the future as well and uh, now we're into September it is uh, believe it or not bull season even well okay. it's it's, um, it's new to me. spring flowering bulbs we're talking about spring flowering bulbs and uh, and the reason we've got to talk about these uh, now is uh, because you can only really plant them at this time of year as a dry bulb you the spring flowering bulbs come out obviously in spring mm -hmm. but you've really got to plant them now uh, if you think about it everybody thinks about when they see daffodils out in the spring looking colorful think oh I must get some daffodils it's usually too late by then so you've really got to be prepared get the uh, get organized and start planting now and I'm just going to show you a few uh, different well different ways of, of buying bulbs and explain different ways of buying bulbs and what you've really got to look for so right. I've just got to, over here uh, in our, the um, bags of bulbs that uh, the, these are, are pre-packed bulbs which we uh, tend to uh, sell at Swarkston mm -hmm. it's nice and easy great for the amateur gardener uh, but also good for the experienced gardener if they know exactly what colours they want and uh, new uh, unusual varieties there's always new varieties coming out each year now like I say this is a pre-packed bulb now with a pre-packed bulb you get a nice big picture you see exactly what you're going to get uh, um, on the, uh, the the picture there. So it's in the pack. It, uh, it comes to that. On the yeah. The, the this is the variety. This is brown sugar, which is a, a new uh, a new variety. Um, you get seven bulbs in here. Um, you can actually buy them loose as well at certain places where you can, if you want a, a bigger uh, batch uh, or you want six bulbs, you can buy six bulbs and you can individually pick the bulbs out. So what you see with these, Mark, is what you get in the packet. Exactly. When you grow yeah. Them. Good good photo there. So it gives you a really good idea of what you're going to get uh, also uh, the packaging also tells you that it's fragrant it flowers April to May uh, and the height is 45 centimeters uh, 18 inches uh, high and then lots of information on the back uh, it tells you to actually plant uh, from August onwards and 10 centimeters uh, deep um, or four inches deep and 10 centimeters wide four inches apart that will actually give you a uh, really good uh, show and give you a nice clump uh, the other packet obviously well, everybody knows uh, daffodils but this one's a um, dwarf daffodil uh, spring dawn, uh, dawn it's one of the earliest daffodils to come out and the great thing about uh, spring flowering bulls when you start seeing spring flowering bulls makes you feel great winter's over spring's on its way yeah. you're getting warm weather again so um, yeah but you have to plant them uh, now and uh, and uh, today's kind of perfect uh, with um, it's not too hot no, uh, it's a little bit cool it's a little bit on the cool side it's, it's going to be uh, we've had very good weather and very dry weather but today's perfect it's not wet you don't really want to be planting bulbs in wet because the rot uh, and you don't really want them dry so today's uh, kind of a perfect day to be uh, doing bulbs yes. so th this is the area that we're going to plant in uh, the reason why I've chose this area is because because this will really complement the, the existing shrubs that are already in uh, in here. Uh, these won't have really 
any colour at all during spring so adding bulbs into this area will uh, prolong the colour, uh, colourful area okay. in, this, uh, in this part of the garden. And it's uh, quite a good day to do it as well? Perfect day to do it, uh, not too hot, uh, not too cold, it's not wet at all because you don't really want to be planting bulbs when it's really wet and you don't want to be really planting bulbs when it's very very dry so uh, now is absolutely uh, perfect. So. Just looking, someone's just caught my eye Mark. What? What's that big yellow plant there? Yeah, the, day, the yellow daisy is uh, quite a popular plant. That's called uh, Rudbeckia, and a nice herbaceous perennial, very, very bright, very, very summery, masses of flowers, and we planted that uh, at the same time as we, we planted your plant, which is the Serrata stigma, uh, and you can see how quickly it's uh, filled out uh, as, a, as a plant. So, is the plant still going that I've planted? Yeah, I mean, this will carry on uh, flowering. It's still got quite a few flower buds to come. This, is, this will carry on flowering until uh, around about October. Uh, November time and uh, we um, uh, you just keep deadheading and, and it'll keep on sending uh, flower spikes so this is what's classed as a as a kind of late summer autumn uh, flowering perennial and uh, you know a really really uh, sunny happy plant you know it, it's a very very bright plant and, and as you can see against the wall here it really stands out what's a good time to start planting those uh, you can start planting those sort of uh, March uh, April time um, but it is a later flowering one so when you buy it it will be just green leaf uh, but uh, obviously it comes into flower right now so uh, really really showy plants and you do need that you need uh, the early spring flowering herbaceous plants and the uh, later flowering ones to give you that succession of uh, flower so we've already had certain plants that's been in flower gone over now and it's been taken over by these herbaceous perennials now well you know you know how to do is stuff know how to eye catch people when you come into the garden that's, yeah that's your idea isn't it? yeah it's, it's kind of to draw the eye to certain places a little bit further on uh, down the garden there was uh, another plant that really catched the, catch the eye now we're moving to a little bit further down the garden and there's certain things that will catch the eye and, and really say make people say wow you know and that's really what you want um, earlier on in the season the spirea sort of shone and it had its flowers uh, out now it's being overtaken by the rudbeckia now so yeah things just move on and progress and, and overlap hopefully uh, all the plants it looks like i said before it does look a really nice garden yeah uh, we try to uh, incorporate as much color and uh, as we can and, and really all year round interest that's why uh, it is important to try and get the bulbs in now uh, rather than because you wouldn't be able to do this any other time of the year so trying to put bulbs in now really interesting bulbs in, and giving spring color is really important because next spring if i don't get bulbs in it will look quite dowdy and miserable so you really need that boost of colour in the spring. Right so Mike, we will go to the ball planting. Okay and then, so yeah, so I've picked this area and uh, what I've uh, decided, do the tulips, now there is a plan to this, I don't just simply <laughs> uh, <laughs> get any old it's kind of out, is it? <laughs> no, yeah. uh, and it will, it will be obvious, um, the tulip per brown sugar there, it's, it's a relatively smallish one, you know, just over a foot tall, but I've I've decided to plant that next to the abelia because it's similar sort of colours. That is evergreen, so it will have that colour. But these coming up um, next to the abelia will complement each other. A lot of the planting, like the yellows, the oranges, oranges, and then this is red, it all complements each other. So it does, there is a plan, like I say. So you know how to fashion the garden. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just, this is, um, this is actually perfect. So it's not too heavy. It is a little bit hard at the moment because it is, dry it is um, slightly damp you can see the color being uh, the color of the soil uh, quite dark there because it is a, it's a bit of damp so it's perfect it's not sitting in water um got to uh, a little bit tough it is a little bit tough but that's um, that's okay um the uh, fort will we're roughly almost at the depth now um, so how deep are you actually going generally there? Uh, roughly about 10 centimetres, which is uh, four inches. Um, and what I'm actually doing is going slightly deeper. And the reason I'm going slightly deeper is because I'm making sure the soil underneath is nice and well drained and free flowing. Because what you don't want is to plant your bulbs in the ground if it's hard underneath the water settling there and rotting your bulbs and then right. they won't obviously come up so you've got to make sure that the drainage underneath the bulbs is is sound and uh, you give them a good really really good start 
Now, you can buy bulb fibre, which is a special compost for bulbs, but um, because the soil is very, very good and it's very well drained, I'm not going to use uh, bulb fibre um, myself. I'm just going to put it in the ordinary garden soil. And because it's this soil has been fertilised when, when the um, plants went in, mm -hmm. I'm not actually going to put any additional fertiliser. If these uh, had been in for a while and they've been in a year or two years, then I would put a granular fertiliser over the top or a liquid fertiliser. Because once they use, they're quite greedy, once they use a pool of the nutrients, you really need to keep feeding them and uh, so that you get a better show year after year. So we're about to plant, just uh, scoop that out. And like I say, they're not uh, overly tall tulips, these, because you can get quite a few um, tulips. Um, see, I've gone quite deep there, but what I'm going to do is fill that hole kind of back in with looser soil, so they've got the roots have got something to um, bed into. And it's Would you recommend be... people to go uh, deeper? Um, yeah, just uh, depending on the bulb, uh, but go a little bit deeper. So now they've got a great base uh, to sit on. They're not going to be sat in water, and it's going to give them a great start. So it's just simply. No special um, method, method or preparation. The, obviously, the, the the key thing is to making sure you get it the right way around. <laughs> Bulls are one of the hardest things to um, to uh, get the wrong way. Um, now that's a tulip bulb. The flat, the flat part, which looks like there could be roots coming out at some point, is obviously the place where you put them at the bottom, and then you've got a, a little pointy end at the top, which is the top of the bulb. So you've got to sit it in that way around, and it's just. Well, I did have a go last month, Mark, but uh, I don't think I was. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's uh, it's um, you can also. Um, this, is, this isn't this is one of my uh, silly jokes, but you can actually get what's called tulip finger. Uh, if, you're not, uh, if you're not too careful, the sap that's in, the, in a tulip, uh, if you rub your eye, will um, make your eye swell up or your, or your really? uh, fingers split. Yeah, it's, um, it's, quite a, it's quite a problem. I used to do, deal with loose tulip bulbs years ago, and if you're handling them all the time without gloves on, you can get what's called tulip finger. It can make the sides of your fingers split, be very, very painful. So if wow. you're susceptible to problems with bulbs or you're new to bulb planting, I would always wear gloves, but because my fingers are quite leathery now. <laughs> um, you're used to the pain. I'm used to the pain. <laughs> so I'm just going to cover those over, making sure there's no big stones uh, in there. It doesn't matter if there's little stones, but always, always crunching up the soil just so there's no heavy lumps because does that prevent the growth exactly yes. exactly it prevents the growth coming up and uh, you just and it's just simply so i don't do this program without learning anything no that, that's the whole point that's the whole point and uh, but yeah and obviously that looks like uh, just a a um a piece of soil now what you would do is I would put a, a cane in there um, with either the name of the bulbs on there just to let you know there's bulbs in there so you don't go and then dig them uh, yeah, sure. back up again so um, uh, just a handy tip you know put a, a cane in there just to let you know that you're not going to be because people do it all the time they dig the bulbs back up which they've uh, planted you know the the they see a plant in the garden centre oh I'll stick that in the spot in this <laughs> gap here and they've forgotten that they put bulbs in there so always handy putting a cane in there paint the tops or label it up with the, the name of the bulb to, to remind you what you planted in there because it's a long time between now and next spring so uh, always uh, label the uh, bulbs up. Um, do you want to quickly um, plant, shall we yeah, we'll quickly plant the, one, the um, yeah. daffodils uh, because it is a different bulb, uh, a little bit more, a um, little bit more uh, uh, thing but I will just show you, I will uh, plant these a little bit later, but I'll show you quickly. Show you the bulb. So it's a different type of bulb altogether. Traditional daffodil bulb, very different to the uh, to the tulip. Easy enough. You can see the roots there. You normally get these uh, side um, bulblets on the side of the bulb, which will make flower spikes as well. Again, pointy end at the top, roots at the bottom, and you sit those in the uh, in the ground. Exactly the same process of planting the uh, the tulips. Just go a little bit deeper, ruffle up the soil underneath because they don't want to be rotten, and cover up 
and uh, you get a fantastic show. Well, Matt, while you was hard at work planting now, I've had a look at the garden. Yeah, it's coming it's com on really well. Yeah, coming on really well. So, yeah, just finished uh, off the uh, the daffodils. Uh, they were the, basically the same process as the uh, as the tulips. It, it, obviously, if it was a smaller bulb, like a crocus, for instance, it'd be a shorter, de uh, uh, narrow, uh, smaller depth. Um, but uh, daffodils and tulips, roughly the same sort of uh, height. So, uh, it's. Uh, I don't notice of it. What's happened to your fork? Yes, I had a bit of a calamity. Uh, yeah, yeah. In TV land, we don't have any problems, but uh, I managed to uh, <laughs> break my fork while planting. That is quite a hefty stone, and I was a bit eager. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we uh, have a a, a, a dead uh, fork. Of a now. disaster. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. Um, but these things happen, don't they? They do. This is gardening. This is why. <laughs> Garden is in, <laughs> enjoyable. We uh, we have these uh, problems, but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'll probably be able to use that and straighten that back out again. Uh, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't suppose you could do that again. No, no, no. I don't think so. No. Well, could we have a reenactment. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have a look at uh, what we've uh, got in store for uh, Plant of the Month. Okay. I've, got a, I've got a cracker for you this month. Okay, we moved over to Plant of the Month and uh, this is your little cracker for the month. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Crocosmia, which... Uh, I'm glad you said that. Every, <laughs> every month it gets these long, long names. Yeah, yeah, no, Crocosmia uh, is, a, is a personal favourite of mine. People know it as Montbrecher, but Montbrecher is different. Uh, similar sort of family, but this is Crocosmia. Um, um, normally, when people think of Crocosmia, they think of Crocosmia lucifer, which is the uh, deep uh, blood uh, red one with very, very long uh, flower spikes. But there's all sorts of different varieties. We've got George Davison here, Ellen, Emily McKenzie. Uh, we've got um, Carmine Brilliant, which is a very, very fiery dwarf. Uh, red one there, uh, smaller flowers, but very, very pretty. And and again, uh, because it's in flower now, very, very easy to grow. You can split it as well, so you can make more plants uh, at the end of the season. But the reason why I've picked this one as well, because we were talking about planting bulbs in the spring and spring flowering bulbs, Crocosmia is actually a bulb, uh, and it's obviously a late summer, autumn flowering bulb. Uh, so you can just see how you get bulbs that flower in the spring, in the summer, and in the uh, in the late summer and autumn as well. Um, so that's the reason why I picked it. Very, very uh, easy to grow. It is used in herbaceous borders. We've got a number of, of Crocosma, different varieties uh, implanted in our garden uh, that we've just visited. And it's just such a good, showy, uh, fiery uh, uh, flowering plant at this time of year. And uh, it's well worth, uh, I'd definitely recommend uh, somebody having this in the garden, just through uh, uh, ease of uh, planting. You just simply plant, leave and forget about it and it gets bigger and bitter, bigger every year and gets much better. How do you go about picking your plant in the month? I know I've asked you before, but do it, you ever get that question? Well, yeah, it's uh, I get it uh, asked quite a lot. People think, oh, it's just something that's in flower at any t any uh, given moment. There is a lot of thought, and it has to be personal favourites of mine. Uh, something that I've used, I've got in my own garden that I know that succeeds well. Because at the end of the day, I want people to garden. I want uh, people won't garden if they have things in the garden that won't succeed. So mm -hmm. I try and pick things that succeed well. That won't have any uh, problems with and that are relatively easy to grow you know they don't get diseased you get lots of flour for your money and uh, and will give you lots of pleasure because that's what it's all about at the end of the day mm -hmm. um, so yeah and uh, and just because We'd, uh, we'd touched on the fact of bulbs and uh, you know different types of bulbs because everybody thinks of bulbs as spring flowering bulbs. You can obviously get summer flowering bulbs which are lilies which we've covered as well and uh, now we've come on to crocosmia which are the late summer and autumn flowering. So there is a wide uh, spectrum of, uh, of bulbs you can get but uh, no plant of the month is, uh, is crocosmia. Uh, not any particular variety because I've got 
I mean, as you can see, there's lots of different colours. It's very hard to pick a particular uh, personal favourite, but uh, yeah, I love uh, Crocosmia and it's just such an easy plant to grow. Crocosmia. Um, moving on to jobs of the month jobs for of September. The yeah, because now we're moving into September. Uh, we're talking about herbaceous perennials again. We looked at the garden. Uh, as we was walking around the garden, I was looking at jobs that I needed to do in the garden. It's very nice now having a garden. And it's, uh, it prompts you to, to do things and things that you need to be doing in your own garden. And... Uh, deadheading old summer flowering uh, herbaceous perennials not obviously things that are in flower now but things that have been in flower where these are taken over from so you must deadhead them you don't have to cut them right back just simply cut the old flower head off just leave the plant let that die back down because that will die back down uh, into the ground any summer flowering shrubs that are finished and gone over um, it's kind of uh, at this time of year it's more of a tidying up mm -hmm. uh, get rid of old flower heads old leaves things that have been scorched by the sun or burnt by the, uh, by the wind and just to give a general tidy up ready for the winter you don't want uh, old diseased leaves going in rotting into the ground you know to be transferred for next year get rid of all those leaves anything that you look uh, that looks uh, very very tatty get rid you don't need it on the plant and just a general it's very easy at this time of year there's not that much work to do but just simply deadhead uh, neat and up ready for the winter uh, and also because uh, grass is still growing mm -hmm. put an autumn and winter uh, feed on at this time of year that'll uh, feed it protect it um, give it uh, moss uh, killer protection as well um, and give you a really good looking uh, lawn going uh, into the winter and just a quick question from myself yeah uh, you know when the dark days come in you know yeah. you get your dark clouds is it good to have solar lights in the garden this yeah time of year? The, the great thing about solar lights is the technology moved on so much in the last couple of years when solar lights first came out they didn't really suit our um, uh, environment and, and the, the amount of sun that we get in Britain. But solar lights come on so much and you get uh, really good, I've got solar light uh, lit pot you know, it's an ordinary uh, pot which lights up yeah. and even now when the, you get the dark days and overcast days come night time it's glowing as much as it did in summer so technology moved on but it's great because as the nights are moving in you've got the solar lights coming on and it feels a little bit more cosy and you're venturing out into the garden a little bit longer than probably you would have done right uh, so we'll be covering uh, using your garden a little bit more in the uh, in the darker months uh, in a couple of uh, months time and I'll Brilliant. be showing you solar lights then and uh, and how you can use those and things like chimneys and just to make the garden an extension of your home inside okay um, so there you go this month's uh, program a lovely great insight again Mark thank yeah. you very much so if people like getting in touch with you in the future how do they uh, go around it well the, the easiest thing would be uh, by telephone which is 01332 uh, 700 800 this is telephone number or the email address if they've got any questions if you've got any photos or any if you want any plants identifying we get a lot of uh, I get a lot of questions about can you identify this plant so it's always happy or easy with, um, with a photo rather than the description and if you want to email those in it's info at Swarkston Nursery remembering that in, in Swarkston um, and uh, .co.uk you can email those in or you can find us on on Facebook all the social media uh, if you put in uh, in the search bar Swarkston Nursery you'll find our page you'll also find our restaurant page there as well and uh, you can email or, or ask us any questions on the Facebook page that's always uh, very good we check that on a daily basis um, and those are the the main ways or if you really wanted to come in and visit yeah. and ask in person uh, you know I'm always here I can always answer your questions bring a bit in bring a piece of uh, planting that you want to identify in, or bring a leaf in that you need to identify a problem I'll be able to tell you good cheers Mark thank you very much for no this problem. Moment. thank you